Good afternoon. This is Associate Pastor Ray Branch of the Central Baptist Church here in Mount C, Tennessee. And we want to welcome you once again to the Central Baptist Church Facebook broadcast on this fine Wednesday. And it's our prayer that this broadcast would find you doing happy and well in the Lord. And certainly God's been good to us. We can't complain about that. No matter what we have going on in our lives, uh, God has been good to us. And I thank God for that. I thank Him for His mercy and His grace. And uh, we don't deserve anything that He does for us, but He has truly blessed us. Well, before we go any further into the message uh, for the afternoon, we want to go to the Lord in prayer and ask His blessings on the broadcast today. And we want to pray for you also. We want to pray that God's blessings would be on you. We want to pray that God would take care of you and meet your needs. Uh, many of you today are maybe carrying a very heavy load, a burden, and uh, God can help us with that. He said that for us to bring our burdens to Him, and uh, He is able to bear those things, and we want to do that. Not only that, but we want to pray for you. The Bible says in Galatians that we should bear one another's burdens. And certainly, we hope that you'll pray for us as we pray for you, and just pray God's blessings. Uh, and most of all, let's pray God's will would be done. Let's not forget to pray for our nation, pray for the leaders of our nation, and let's just pray that God's will be done in all things. So at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we want to thank you and we want to praise you for who you are. God, we want to thank you, God, for your love, your mercy, your grace, your kindness. Lord, we don't deserve not one single thing that you do for us. But Father, you bless us beyond measure each and every day, Lord. And you load us up with your grace and your mercy. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord God, for salvation. We thank you, Lord God, for the promises that we have as children of God. And Father, we pray today, Lord, on behalf of our nation. Father God, first of all, we want to praise you for what you have done already. Lord, we never want to take that for granted. But God, we do pray that you'd be with those affected by the virus. We pray for those affected by the shut-ins. And, and Lord, we just ask you, Lord, that you would just have your will and your way in our lives. God, we pray for those out there today who may be sick and afflicted. You are still the great physician, and if any healing will be done, it'll come by you, it'll come through you. And God, we pray for those discouraged today for whatever reason. God, we pray that you go to where they are. God, lift them in their spirits. And Father, we trust today, Lord, that your will be done in our lives. Lord, help us to be accepting of your will. And Father, we'll not fail to give you the glory, honor, and praise for all things. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to go right into the message today. And uh, we, we're thinking on this thought today. Here it is. It's this particular time of year, and a lot of people are starting to work on their garden. As a matter of fact, my father-in-law yesterday, he was working in his garden and uh, planting potatoes, and uh, it's just that time of year. People are planting, and it won't be long. It'll be right around the corner before we know it. It'll be time to reap those things that we have planted. As we think about putting gardens out, I want to think on this thought, how does your garden grow? How does your garden grow. And for the text for that, we want to look over in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, we're going to look at the first 11 verses. And uh, the church of Corinth, the Apostle Paul had more trouble with the church of Corinth than he did any of the other churches that he uh, founded or uh, was that and taught and wrote letters to. But the church of Corinth was a very carnal church. And as we look there, they were beginning to have problems. And in this uh, epistle that Paul writes to the church of Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Notice what's taking place here. It says, And I, brethren, verse number 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So here's the first problem. He said, listen, you're saved. Now, this is not written to lost people. This is written to saved people, saved people in the church. And he said, you're carnal. And you know, it's possible to be saved by the grace of God and yet be carnal and be out of the will of God. And that's what he's discussing here. Look at verse number two. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for here, uh, hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers of whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave increase. 
So that neither is he that planteth anything, neither in neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandmen, husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now here was the problem in the Corinth church. They had favorite preachers. Some were saying, I like Paul. I'm a follower of Paul. I am of Paul. Some said, I like this man by the name of Apollos. And Apollos was a good uh, preacher, a good uh, minister of the gospel. And some said, well, I like Apollos and I am of an Apollos. And they had these cliques and they had these things going on. Problem of that was Paul made it very clear, listen, you need to be followers of God. And if we're not careful in the day and time in which we live, we'll find ourselves being preacher followers as well. And it's not God's will that we do that. So he's talking about the fact that he could not feed them with meat. And what he's talking about is doctrine. He's talking about the Word of God. He says you're just like babies. You're, you're still on the meat. You know, when you're born again, and that's a term for salvation, when you get saved by the grace of God, you're born again. You are a babe in Christ. But just as it's not natural for a baby to remain that way, babies need to grow. They need to mature. As they get older, they get stronger, and they can eat uh, other foods and not just milk like a baby. And he said, you're, you're still yet babes in Christ. You need to grow in the grace and the knowledge. Second Peter 3.18 says, but go, grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I need to grow in knowledge, and we do that through the Word of God. And Paul said, listen, you're still babes in Christ. You can't handle doctrine. And he said, you need to grow up. And there's a lot of Christians today that simply need to grow up. And as I think about this thought, how does your garden grow? And I'm thinking about us and our spiritual lives. We need to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to realize that it's all on Jesus Christ. Just as he said here in 1 Corinthians 3, verse number 11, he said no other foundation can be laid that is already laid. That's Jesus Christ. That's the foundation. And we need to build upon that. We need to grow upon that. And I want to think about this. How does your garden grow? And I want to think about this just like your life. Just as we plant a garden, there's certain steps you do when you plant a garden, and there's certain things that we need to do as Christians if we are to grow the way that God wants us to grow, to be strong in our faith, not wavering, not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, but to be strong in our faith and to be healthy in the Spirit. And we need to take certain steps just like a garden. And first of all, when you plant a garden, number one, there is preparation. There is preparation. You think about a garden, and uh, when I was younger, and certainly it's something we did every year, was we put a garden out. And you would first thing you would have to do was you would have to plow. You would have to plow that ground. And the reason we do that is you must prepare the ground. You just can't go out and throw seed out because it'll fall on the hard ground, ground that's not been prepared. Do you realize that two different times in the Word of God, speaking about uh being what we need to be for the glory of God in the Old Testament. Jeremiah 4.3 uh, says, For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. Now that fallow ground, it's, it's hard ground. It's, it's not something that would be, it'd be as though you're trying to prepare a garden on ground that's not been prepared, it's not been plowed, it's not been broken up. And you know, our hearts can be hardened. But as a matter of fact, before you were saved by the grace of God, you had a hardened heart. And that's why when the preachers preach and uh, people witness to you, because of the hardness of your heart, it is though that seed of the gospel would fall and it wouldn't take root in your life. That ground needs to be broken up. Hosea ten twelve also says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Once again, we find that word fallow ground commanded to break up the fallow ground. And it's uncultivated, untilled, natural. 
We talk about the natural man, how he cannot perceive the spiritual things of God. And, you know, it's natural. It's, it's not broken up. It's, it's uncultivated. You know, man's heart is an Adam nature. We're born in iniquity. We're shapen in iniquity. We're unhumbled. We're, we're untouched. And, you know, we bring forth weeds and thorns. And it's not what it needs to be. That fallow ground of our heart needs to be broken up. As a matter of fact, the Bible says we need to have tender hearts. As a matter of fact, 1 Peter 5.5 5 says, For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. So when we think about planting gardens, we got to break up that ground. It's the same way with our hearts. We have to break up that ground. Now, when you get saved by the grace of God, that hardened heart is broken. And, and when we get saved by the grace of God, our heart becomes tender. But don't think that when you're saved that you never have to try to keep your heart tender because if we're not careful, our heart will begin to harden once again. And it's just like a garden. You know, as good as I do, those of you that's planted gardens, once you break up that ground and then you disc it and, uh, you know, you do all those things and you begin to plant those things, what do you have to do? You still have to come along. You still have to hoe it. You still, many times you take the roll of Hilder and you go out through there and you continue to break it up because it will become hard again. And if we're not careful as Christians, our hearts will become hardened. And there's some things, and we'll get to that in just a few moments, that we can do to keep our hearts tender. But we need to prepare that ground. Then not only that, one thing that I always hated about gardening, when talking about preparation and not just preparing the ground, but then you'd have to gather up stones. Well, one thing I hated to do was pick up rocks. You know, and there are certain things that my dad would do and certain things my mom would do. And then there was the things that they would give us children to do. And guess what our job was? Go out and pick up all the rocks out of the garden. And you say, you know, you gather the stones. And the purpose of, of removing stones is so that the seed, when it's planted, can grow freely. Nothing can grow with a lot of weight on it. You get those rocks up because... Yeah, but those rocks will keep you from making straight paths. Those rocks will uh, they will get in the way of the seed and the growing. And we need to pick up those large stones and those stones in that garden. You know, and I think about in Hebrews 12 and verse number 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, he says, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And when you think about that, and I don't know if you've ever considered this, but there's two things that we are to lay aside. First of all, it said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Now, so many people, they want to make this one and the same. That weight is sin, but that's not how it reads here. It says, let us lay, a wide, let us lay aside every weight comma, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. There's two things that'll beset us in the Christian life. There's two things that'll hinder us from running this race that is set before us. Weight and sin. Now we know that sin, what sin is. Sin is knowing the good and knowing to do good and doeth it not. Sin is doing all those things that we know we should not do. So what is the extra weight? I believe that these are things that's not necessarily evil, but it's things that can get in our way of, of growing as a Christian, running this race. Did you know that good things put in the wrong order in your life can, can hinder you? Family. Can hinder, family's a wonderful thing. God instituted the family before he instituted the church. But if we are not careful, family will get in the way of us serving God. What about our jobs? Jobs are necessary. Jobs are good things. We can be witnesses on the job, but if we're not careful, we'll put those jobs before God, and we don't want to do that. So I believe that those weights that it talks about here may be things that are not necessarily bad things, but things that are out of order in our lives. Hobbies, children, jobs, you know, even church. Church is a great thing. It's a tremendous thing. It's a needed thing. But if we're not careful, we'll get so busy doing things in the church that we neglect our relationship and fellowship with God. And we need to set aside those weights and put everything back in order 
And so we need to gather up those stones. What are the stones in your life? What are those things that are keeping you from growing the way you need to grow? What are those things that are hindering you in your Christian life? God help us today. So first of all, there's preparation when how does your garden grow? Second of all, planting. Now after you prepare the ground and, and, and you've gathered up the stones and you've done the preparation work, now there's the planting. There is the planting. And of course, you know the parable in Luke chapter number 8 talking about the seed and uh, the seed that were sown. And it, and it tells us very clearly that the seed is the Word of God. The seed is the Word of God. The seed has to be sown. And, and don't wait on the preacher to sow the seed. The, the right kind of seed has to be sown, and that is the Word of God. And when I think about this, I think about there's many people today and they think it's the preacher's responsibility to preach and to give them the Word of God and explain the Word of God. It's the Sunday school teacher's uh, job to give them the lesson. And that's that's only, that's supplemental. That's supplemental. Preaching and Sundays, that's all supplemental. You should be going to the Word of God yourself. You should be reading the Word of God, studying the Word of God. That is the seed, and that has to be planted in your heart. That's why it's important to keep your heart tender, keep it broken up, so that when you read the Word of God or hear the Word of God, it'll fall on the right kind of ground and it'll take root in your life. You know, 1 Corinthians one twenty one says, For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Preaching is essential. There's many people today that says, well, I don't need to go to church or, you know, I don't need to listen to a preacher. I can do it all myself. Well, according to the Word of God, the Bible says that God chose the foolishness of preaching. And the reason he says foolishness is there's so many people out there that that's what they believe preaching is and something but foolishness. Romans 10, 14 says, And how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher. Preaching is so vital today. That's why it's so vital that you find a good man of God who loves the Lord, who, who gives himself to the Word of God, who preaches. So you need to, to, to get that seed planted in your life. And it comes by reading the Word of God. It comes by preaching and, and just studying and the Holy Spirit of God giving that to you. And why I'm thinking about sowing and planting, you know, there's principles of sowing and planting. In Galatians 6, uh, 7 through 9, we find those principles. And I'll turn there uh, very quickly and go over that. Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Listen to what it says. It says, let him that is uh, taught... Or it says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap uh, corruption. He that soweth to the Spirit of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. So there's, there's a principle when it comes to sowing and reaping. You know, the Bible goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, But this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So there's principles about sowing. When we talk about planting seed, when you go out to the garden, the more seed you sow, the more crop you're going to have. If you sow sparingly, you don't put much seed out, you're not going to get much of a crop. If you sow a lot, then you'll get a lot. And we we found, be not deceived, God's not mocked. What so a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you reap to the flesh... And there's a lot of Christians today, they're feeding the flesh. They reap to, they sow to the flesh and they're going to reap of the flesh and they're going to reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall reap life everlasting. We need to be sowing to the Spirit. We need to be feeding that Spirit man. We need to be doing all we can to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To be the best Christian. I don't know about you, but I want to be the best Christian I can be. I, I don't want to be just a dime a dozen Christian. I don't want to be just another dime a dozen preacher. I want to be the best that I can be. First of all, for the glory of God. But second of all, to be a blessing to others. 
So when we think about how does your garden grow, we think about the preparation work that must be done. We think about the planting. Number three, the precipitation. The precipitation. You know as good as I do when you plant a garden, there's some things that we have to have to have a successful garden. And the right kind of ground, sunshine, but we have to have precipitation. And that comes in two ways. First of all, you've got to water it. There has to be someone to water it. You know, I can think of times when it's been dry and, uh, you know, you'll get those and they'll take water hoses and they'll water their garden. Sprinkle uh, the sprinklers that will uh, sprinkle and put water out on it when it's dry. We need that. You know, as I think about the Apostle Paul here in 1 Corinthians in chapter number 3, he talks about the fact, he said, you know what? Some have come and planted. Some have watered. But God gives the increase. But someone has to labor. Are you laboring today for the Lord? Are you doing what needs to be done for the glory of God? The Bible says that we need to be working now. We need to be laboring now while we can because there cometh a time when we'll not be able to. Redeem the time, the Bible says. So we need to water. We need to, we need to do what we can for the glory of God. But then there's the natural precipitation, rain. We think about rain. And I think about how God helps us through the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus said in, in the book of John when he was talking about going away, and he was talking about the Comforter or the Holy Spirit of God coming, and he said he would lead us in all truth. He would guide us. He would convict of sin. He does all those things. That's how we grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I can do all that I can. I can get into the Word of God. I can study and I can pray. That's me watering. That's me doing what I can. But it goes far beyond that. I have to have the rain. I have to have the Holy Spirit of God to lead me and guide me and direct me. Deuteronomy 32 two says, My doctrine, now listen to this, My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew as the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. Psalm 72, 6 says, He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. We talk about there shall be showers of blessing. We sing that song in church. And we're talking about the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God can lead me and guide me and help me to grow and be the Christian I need to be. If I just let him have control of my life. So many times I've been reading my Bible. So many times I've been listening to a preacher. And it may be something I've heard over and over again. Maybe something I've read in the Bible over and over again. And then all of a sudden, just like that, I have, I've seen something I've never seen before. The Holy Spirit of God illuminates our minds and our hearts and gives us understanding concerning his word if we'll just give him control and seek it. So for our gardens to grow, for us to grow spiritually, we have to have the precipitation. We need to do our part in watering. And we need to let the Holy Spirit of God rain down his blessings upon us. Then number four, we need to take proper care in our gardens. What I mean by that is this. Weeds. You know, one thing I always hated about gardens, you got to weed the gardens. You take a hoe and you chop down the weeds. You dig up the weeds. You reach down. You pull up the weeds. Weeds. There, there has to be a continual care for the seed as it grows. You know what a weed is? If you look up the definition of a weed, a weed is a plant that tends to grow quickly where it is not wanted and chokes out the more desirable plants. Weeds grow quicker than your crop will. I guarantee it. They'll, it'll grow quicker. It'll grow when you don't want it there. You know what? And that's the way sin is in our lives. It, it seems as though we read and we study and we want to be spiritual. We want to be the Christian God would want us to be. But then we have trouble with that because of sin in our life. And we're waiting for the fruits to be yielded in our life of the spiritual man. And, and all of a sudden, you're getting all these things cropping up that you don't need in your life. Things that will choke out the spiritual side, things that will hinder you in your walk, things that will hinder you in your fight, things that will hinder you in your race. Those are the weeds that we need to make sure we keep pulled up in our lives. 
They take a lot of the nutrition away from where it is really needed in those plants. They really make a garden look ugly. Now, I know some people, and they'll say, well, I'm not going to worry about the weeds. Just let them grow. They'll be okay. But a garden it's, that has a lot of weeds, it's ugly. And a Christian life that's not taken care of, a Christian life that has a lot of sin in it, is an ugly thing. And it's very ineffective. It's very ineffective. We don't have the witness we need when we have sin in our life. We need to get those weeds up. We need to get those things that are choking out the spiritual side in our lives. And just because you get rid of the weed and the thorns once, don't think it's not going to grow back. You can go through and you can weed that garden, get every weed in it up, and I guarantee in a week or so, those weeds are going to be right back again. You've got to continually do that. And that's the way the Christian life is. We are going to continually tend with sin. We are going to continually deal with this flesh until we go to heaven. Then we won't have to worry about it anymore. But until then, we're going to have to take care of that. We're going to have to crucify the flesh. The Bible says daily we have to do that. Then we have to worry about sabotage. In Matthew 13, we read about the, the man that went out and sowed seed. And the Bible says, And at night the enemy come and he sowed tares among the wheat. It was sabotage. And, and the devil will do that. The devil will try to uh, trodden down your crop, try to devour. It's like those crows and the birds that come. And you've got to keep those uh, birds away. And I know my father-in-law, he has the hardest time keeping deer out of his garden. He's done everything he can to keep deer out of his garden. They trample on it. They eat all the plants. And that's the way the devil is. The Bible says the devil is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. we got to keep him away. And the Bible tells us in the book of James how to make him flee. And we need to do that. The Bible says, be not ignorant of the devil and his devices. We can study the word of God and we can find out how to keep the devil out of our lives. And you have to make sure that someone doesn't sow tares and false doctrine. So, so what? Uh, see what their fruits are before you listen. And don't just take it that just because they say they're a preacher or uh, a teacher of the of the Word of God that they know what they're talking. Line up. Listen. Don't even take what I say uh, for granted. Don't just listen and say, "Well, he's a preacher. He knows." Take the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Follow along. Check up on what they're saying. Make sure what they're saying is the truth because false doctrine will hurt you. And don't be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. The Bible says that we need to try and see if it's of God. We need to have spiritual discernment. We need to take proper care and be careful of that sabotage. So we have the preparation, we have the planting, we have the precipitation, we have the proper care, and then thank God we have the production. God will give the increase. The Bible in Galatians talks about the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, and, and so on. And we need to have that in our lives. We need to safeguard our witness. We need to safeguard our testimony. We need to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can have amazing fruits in our life. Our garden, ourselves, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. And I thank God that we can have a beautiful Christian life. A strong witness, a powerful testimony for the Lord if we'll do these things. So let me ask you today, how does your garden grow? Are you keeping the ground broken up, the fallow ground? Are you uh, keeping it uh, you know, prepared with the seed so when that seed is sown, whether it's, whether it's through reading the Word of God or hearing the preaching of God's Word or Sunday school, when you hear the Word, is it falling on the right kind of ground? Are you uh, making sure that you're doing all that you can to water that? Are you opening yourself up to the Holy Spirit of God to rain down His blessings and give you what you need as a child of God to be a child of God that's pleasing to God? Are you properly taking care of your garden yourself? Are you removing the weeds and all those sins and those things that pop up and spring up in your life that rob you of your testimony? Are you making sure that the devil's not sabotaging and trampling down and destroying your Christian life? Because there's things you can do to keep him out. If you'll do these things... You'll have a beautiful garden, and you will certainly uh, be pleasing to God, and you'll be effective in your witness.
for Jesus Christ and you'll be effective in your witness and uh, your testimony. So I certainly hope today that this has been a blessing to you. I hope that it's been a help to you. And how does your garden grow? So at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we want to come before you and we want to thank you for your grace and your mercy. God, we want to praise you for who you are. And God, we want to thank you, Lord, for that wonderful and, and the most wonderful gift of salvation, the free gift that you give to us. But God, that's only the beginning. That's the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. God, help us to build upon that foundation. Help us, Lord, as, as we look at this, as a garden, I pray, Father, that we would keep the foul ground broken up in our lives, keep a tender heart. God, that we would be careful and, and plant. God, that we would sow, God, much, and we would not sow sparingly, but God, we would sow that we would yield uh, forth the fruits of the Spirit. God, I pray that we would take proper care uh, about watering and letting the Holy Spirit of God have free reign in our life. May we keep the weeds out of our life, those roots of bitterness, and God help us not to allow sins to continue in our lives as they spring up and crop up. May we pull those things and get rid of them and get your forgiveness. Father, I pray that we'd be on the lookout for sabotage, that we'd not allow the devil into our lives, that the trample and destroy those fruits. But God, we thank you, Lord, for helping us be the witness that we need to be. God, we praise you for giving us fruits of the Spirit. And God, help us to be effective for your cause. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. God, help us to be what we can be for the glory of you. And we'll thank you and praise you for all. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it's been a blessing. We hope it's been a help to you today. Think about this, though. Maybe if you're out in your garden and ask yourself this, how is my garden growing? And I certainly hope that God will bless you and God will help you to be the child of God that will be pleasing to Him. Until next broadcast time, and we'll see you this coming Lord's Day at the house of God. This is uh, Brother Ray Branch, and saying God bless you is our prayer.